All right. So, this is Castlevania Lords of Shadow New Game Plus and Full Power Tutorial Archival thing. Uh, we did chapters two through or one through five. Now we're starting with six. Uh, starting with the castle courtyard. Despite his best efforts to try entering the castle. On so castle courtyard, you come up here, you come up here, you come across. If you can, you can hit a jump across here. That saves about three seconds. If not, it's not a big deal. Just go across. Once you get here, grapple up. Okay. So we are going to run over here and jump over this gate. The reason for that is this jumping over this gate initiates a checkpoint. Uh, that checkpoint is going to allow us to deal with any mistakes we make as a possibility. If you wanted to, for some reason, this is holy water over here. Uh, there's going to be another opportunity for us to pick up holy water, but if you use some when fighting Ulrox, or you're running low after using the holy water in the sewers, you can grab some there. Uh, for the level, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stomp on this statue. And what happens is, is there is no wall there. Okay. But we don't want to do that. I was just showing that to show that there wasn't a wall. And that you can restart from checkpoint here. That's why we jump over. But what you do want to do instead is we want to jump over that wall, but then kind of angle our double jump to bring us backwards towards this wall. So kind of like... Like we want to go through the wall and then angle back towards it because there's a very small... Or there's kind of like a small ledge before you fall off into infinity. So... See, and I just missed it there. And again, that's why you hit the checkpoint here. It's not too difficult once you figure out how to do it. Every once in a while, you'll make a mistake and miss it, which is why we get that checkpoint. I mean, this is the more harder thing, is actually getting the jump through the wall. <laughs> Funny enough. See? And what's funny enough is I actually triggered the next part of the scene, um, which is what we want to do. Uh, however, I stopped it before it got the checkpoint so that I can hopefully show the correct way. That would be optimal, what I just did, but it's very unlikely that you're going to get that, so we're going to try to do something a little bit more reasonable as the example. We are not doing well hitting this, which is not great. Ugh. Okay. And I think one of the main things is you want to jump more towards over this gate than just through the wall. Because there's a larger kind of ledge there. Um, if you grab onto that, just let go. That's another thing that can happen. Yeah, I am not hitting this. This is pretty shit. Not gonna lie. I usually do not have issues with this. There we go. So this time I landed on a ledge here. Um... Can't really tell you exactly what I did different there, but basically there's a ledge here. Just know that. Um, and like I said, you kind of want to jump more towards through the wall, parallel to the wall, than just like straight through it, uh, like I was doing before. Once you get on here, uh, we are going to try to get into a tunnel. Um, I guess I will show what I mean by the tunnel. So this right here is where we're supposed to go. We're supposed to crank this. This opens up when we fall in a tunnel, which drops us into an arena. So what we're going to try to do is we are going to try to use a jump that takes us towards this tunnel and triggers the checkpoint. So let's try and get over this again. Okay, so that time I triggered the checkpoint, 
without landing on the uh, bridge. But if you do get it, you'll end up in here. Once you end up in here, restart from checkpoint. Do not do this too quickly, because if you do it too quickly, then it won't save the checkpoint. Immediately upon restoring the checkpoint, um, you're going to have your double jump back. You're going to be in air over the arena. So I'm going to start, double jump to the right. Like that. And land up here. If you wanted to, to get a dark crystal, you could double jump to the left and get the dark crystal here. If you did that, though, then you would have to get back across this, and that's kind of annoying. Okay. So, restart. Jump here. We're gonna come over here, drop down here. Come over here, drop down here. If you moved fast enough, you can do this crank without the skeleton stopping you. For safety, I usually do three. And then as you're cranking, release like three to four fairies. Those fairies will distract the skeletons that are trying to stop you from cranking here. And that's a pretty small investment to make sure that you get that skip. If you need to restore your mana, mana restores there. Which is the main reason why I said don't do it during the brawner, or uh, at the end of the sewers. Alright, so that's the end of Castle Courtyard. It maze seems Gardens. Getting into the castle will be more so, Maze Gardens has a few intended ways of doing it. I'm going to do it the intended way, and then I'm going to show you a skip that you can do. Another, scat uh, another statue skip. Run over here, this is all normal. Jump over this wall, drop down. Okay. Uh, remember this statue, because that's part of the skip for later. But I'm going to show the intended way. The intended way is you're supposed to take this spider and if you do do it this way, this is how you should do it, I think. Be careful not to kill the spider, you need it. Uh, you can go either way here. I'm going towards this gate first, just because. But you need the spider for two things. You need it to open up this gate, which you will need it regardless if you do the advanced strat. So keep in mind that you will need a spider. Uh, if you do not do the skip, you'll do that. Then you come over here. Spider lunge can be nice to move around as well, but it can be unwieldy. You're going to use the spider to spin a web bridge here. So after you've opened up that gate and spun that web bridge, then you can kill the spider. Okay, and then head to the puzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what you can do if you don't do that. Okay, this is a spider skip, or like the web bridge skip. You're going to jump on top of this and stomp. Direct launch. Sorry, I missed it. Stomp, direct launch, holy water. Slam, holy water, holy water, avalanche, backwards long jump. Okay. You need that much height. You need that statue. You need two or three holy water. If you don't do those two things, you're never going to make it over this gap. It's just a huge invisible wall. Uh, funny enough, it still thinks that there's a web here. Because there's supposed to be. However, once you get to the end here, it's an invisible wall. But that's the skip for the web bridge. Once you do that, come over here. This is the puzzle. The puzzle is very simple. You get to this middle statue, the statue on the middle ring, and press uh, LT or L2 twice. Now, you want to wait for this key to go into your inventory in the upper right. If you skip this before that, then it won't stay in your inventory. After it drops in your inventory, restart from checkpoint. 
The reason we restart from checkpoint is it reloads the web bridge that the game thinks you should have had. A uh, little bit of science here. Can we ultimate light? No, we can't. So you can't ultimate light there, I'm guessing, because of the gate in the middle. Uh, anyway, after you do that skip, you're still going to need the spider, as mentioned. Uh, it just saves a little bit of time because you don't need to uh, kind of run around the level. Uh, the reason we do that skip is to avoid running around. Um, in full power, it's totally fine to do this skip. In New Game Plus, not full power, you might need to consider what your holy water looks like. Because you're going to be using a fair amount of holy water in the next few areas. Yeah, and holy water budgeting is of the utmost importance in New Game Plus. And still in full power to some extent. Come up here. Use this. The nice thing, though, is once you get on the other side of this gate, here's that holy water again. So you can always kind of fill up a little bit there. Jump over this gate. And use the key. After you use the key, skip. Time Castle Hall. Out. So Castle Hall, you are going to need Soon about five holy waters, maybe even more. Those who are the most um, powerful of If you fail kind. this once on New Game Plus, you have to restart. Uh, you maybe can get a second attempt on full power. Uh, this is what you need to do. Start the scene, run over here, release three fairies. That'll keep those vampires occupied. One, two, three, start releasing some fairies. Four, release some more fairies, just in case those ones don't get them. And then finish cranking. You do not want to have to deal with those vampires. Okay, you're going to come over here. Very specific rising here. Full jump, holy water, avalanche, swing, holy water, swing, holy water, avalanche, swing, holy water, swing, holy water. Hopefully you end up on top. If you don't end up on top, then again, you probably need to restart if you're on New Game Plus. If you're on full power, you might be able to get a second attempt. Um, unfortunately, I do not know why this fails sometimes. Uh, like, sometimes you just gain less height for some reason. It might be a collision thing. Like, maybe the uh, archway of the door stops you, or some sort of collision with the grate, because I know the grate can come up somewhat as well. Let's try it again. Yeah, see, I'm kind of, like, stuck there. So, you can try to do something like that in an emergency to get over the gate, but that's very unlikely to happen if you do it that way. Alright. Let's get it this time. I mean, every time you miss this, it's like 50 seconds lost. So, yeah, it's not very fun to miss it. See, this time I got a ton of height for some reason. Do five? Okay, I'm on top of the door right now. Uh, once you get on top of the door, you want to double jump forward. If you do not double jump forward, then you trigger the chess minigame. You do not want to do that. Uh, you could also try to do a shadow charge off of the top of it if you wanted to try to do that. It's another option. 
but uh, basically you just don't want to hit the chest mini game. Uh, and then end of level triggers there. She has refectory. the body of an innocent child, yet the wits and uh, refectory come over here. Concept is this: uh, these crossed lances from these knights. You're trying to land on top of them. Uh, so you're going to need to use a double avalanche. After that, you use either one or two holy waters to kind of edge yourself on top of them. Um, it's kind of hard at first. I usually start kind of here on the ground. Um, sometimes you can get away with just doing one holy water. It just depends on how your positioning is. Uh, the items here are pretty good for breaking as well. Uh, there was a magic refill point at the start of the level as well. Uh, I guess I can show that real quick. So, if you need resources, you can break these statues, like, all of this stuff. Uh, there's a mana refill. You can break these, you know. So there's options for uh, farming some items here. So since I was behind it, I needed to actually holy water that way. Once you're up here, you want to double avalanche facing right. Backwards long jump over that wall. After you get over that wall, stomp to the ground. Because if you go too far, then you fall out of bounds and you can't get anywhere. So what we're going to do now is we're getting on the other side of this door. You can see the little flashing um, icon where the key's supposed to go. By just jumping onto the other side of that door, we hit a checkpoint. So skip scene, restart last checkpoint. And that'll get you back inbounds on the other side of the door. Uh, from here, we're going to have a puzzle. During the puzzle, things are going to attack us. We're going to use fairies to distract the skeletons at a certain time. And we're going to ignore the knight. So we activate light because that's going to be the first part of the puzzle. Come over here. And it's light, light. dark. Get ready to start making some fairies. One, two, three. Dark. Light. Dark. Okay. So again, that puzzle was light, light, dark, dark, light, dark. Or blue, blue, red, red, blue, red. Um... You do not want to activate the fairies when your light magic is active. If you do that, then you're going to get the fairy bombs rather than the distraction fairies. After you solve the puzzle, skip. And run back over here. And you're good. So that's chapter 6. Chapter 7. Balcony. The butcher who commanded the castle kitchens fed... Uh, balcony. You come over this way fall down here um, you could jump and like double jump over this platform you could use ultimate light ultimate lights a little hard because you'd have to steer around these sharp corners uh, double jumping is kind of hard also for the same thing like I got really lucky there and landed on here a lot of times you won't <laughs> you'll just fall to your death um, so I'd probably recommend just balancing over the beam if possible Although, you are lined up pretty well for the first section, so if maybe you wanted to do, like, a single jump to skip the first section, that'd probably be okay. Come forward here. Important to act quickly here. You come over this way. Jump up here, grab this ledge. Go across. Go up. If you're too slow there, then the wraiths that just spawn can attack you. Come over here. Use attacks to break those. Uh, that can be used to farm items. It also makes it so that if you want to do a landslide version of this, that it won't target the statues. Uh, this is a pretty high wall. In order to get over it, you could do a double holy water. Um, it's very thin, though. See, like... Like, if I just do a full jump here, like a full jump cycle, 
Like, that's not enough. So you do need to have, like, a little bit of holy water for this. See, you get over it. Okay, I think this skip is different on PC versus PS3. On PC, it's super easy. Jump on this lip right here. Then jump, like, kind of through this wall. You could double jump if you want. Uh, keep in mind you want to go high and then forward, rather than just straight forward, because you might go under this platform. Okay. So I'm on a ledge right now, to the left side through the wall. Uh, after that, I need to kind of navigate around the pillar that's near the huge puppet there, near the couch. So I gotta kind of go around that pillar. Hug the wall still. You can kind of see my uh, whip there. So I'm walking around like this pillar also. And then you go over here. Okay. There's a good view of like the floor and everything here, as best as I can give you. Uh, the end of level trigger is up these stairs. Electric this Laboratory. Was Electric Laboratory place. has um, a pretty advanced skip in it as well but it's a very powerful one. Uh, simple thing here. Uh, you punch this, you can skip this scene. This scene, you or this scene you can't skip. This one you can. That's how you solve that puzzle. Uh, there is a movie cutscene here. You can skip that by shadow charging if you want. Um, I missed it there, so it's trying to play it out. Uh, you hit this. Okay, this is a puzzle skip, or a unintended solution. So normally they want you to move this like electricity derrick around and stuff and change stuff up. If you look in the far background, you can see like in the background on the left a little bit, you see like what looks like a yellow circle. That is a pressure sensitive pad that activates when you use shadow magic on a dagger. Uh, what we're gonna do, normally you can't throw to it, like, I can't throw over near it. It just won't let me. If you face your back to this electricity, and then roll into it, you get, like, kind of shocked in place. From here, I can hit it. Okay. You can also pick up daggers here if you need them. You can also pick up magic here if you need it. Uh, ideally, what you do is you throw a dagger, wait a second, throw another dagger, and skip both of those scenes. That way, there's less time between activating the switch this time, for example. So I guess I could show that real quick, how it's intended to look. So what you want to do is something like this. So you get over here. Face backwards, roll, throw, skip, throw, skip, go through. Make sure you give yourself enough time to get through, <laughs> of course, and then throw again. Okay. You can shadow charge through that cutscene trigger also, if you get it. Okay. So, um... A lot of things you can do here. Uh, there is a scene skip, or a boss skip for Frankenstein's monster. Um, I'm gonna show you the intended route right now though, because it's a little bit hard. Uh, the basic crux of this puzzle is this wall is breakable. Once you break that wall and punch that, then you can basically come over here break this and get the uh, lens here. Once you get the lens, you're going to get into a fight with Frankenstein's monster. Beat him down. Uh, once you knock him like this, he's going to start recharging under the sensor. 
what you need to do is run back to the punch pad and punch it when he's underneath the sensor in order to kill him. Uh, this scene is unskippable, as you saw, so it's another big reason why you save time and resources by skipping him. But you see you zap him. And I think you need to do that three times. He'll kind of interrupt you also, like that, when he's ready to uh, charge up. What's annoying is if what happens happens, where he like kind of knocks you away from the uh, device. And that's how you beat him that time if you want to. Okay. And then it's a matter of solving this puzzle. Uh, basically, you need to make it so that the electricity leads a path that uh, allows you to get to where you need to go, for lack of a better term. And I believe in order to do that... Well, this is weird. Huh. There we go. So you open up this way, hit this. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> go over here, hit this one. You can skip these, by the way, but I'm not. I think you turn it one more time. Come over here. Uh, if you want to, you can kind of like speed this up a little bit, but there's a moving platform that you're supposed to use. And uh, hopefully this is open. If this isn't open, then you done goofed and you needed to move it a different way. So this is the incorrect solution. So I actually needed to move it differently. You notice how it actually blocks me off. Even though I have double jump, it still zaps me. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. So instead... We are going to have to do this again. It's another reason to uh, skip this puzzle. Which is quite silly. That's just me being fancy to skip the uh, elevator or the like kind of moving platform. And you go this way, and that ends the stage. Now I'll show you the uh, fancy way to do this. So going back through the stage again. Hit. Skip. Do a shadow charge if you want. Slam. That time I skipped the cutscene correctly. Activate shadow magic, face your back to the electricity, go backwards, throw. Skip. Throw. Skip. Skip. Refill if you need it. Skip if you want. I didn't catch it that time. Okay, this is this skip. So what you need to do is you need to get on top of this breakable wall. After you get on top of this breakable wall, we're going to be getting over an invisible wall uh, towards the back, kind of where that green tubing is. 
But we're actually going to be just barely on the other side of this wall. Like, uh, the wall that runs like this. But, you know, further over there. So, to get on top of this, it's a one avalanche punch with a full jump and one holy water. Now, we are going to, uh, launch with a double jump. Uh, do an avalanche punch, holy water, avalanche punch, holy water, going straight left. Uh, after we do the second holy water, we're going to let go of inputs so we don't go inbounds. Um, so let's do that. So, launch, holy water, launch, holy water, let go of inputs. Okay, I am now over here. On the other side of this wall okay uh, things that can happen you can actually get behind this room like that little room with the switch in it or you can get to the left side of it sometimes um, I found that out which is kind of interesting um, so it is fixable if you see that tiny room again it means you're either behind it or on the left side of it so just try your best to try and maneuver yourself on this side again uh, now what we're going to do, you need to keep in mind that as we move further towards like that egg shape thing in the background, as we move more towards that way, we can fall off of a cliff and be unrecoverable. So what we need to do is try to move in such a way that we use our double jump to catch kind of the ledging behind that egg on that wall. So kind of like this. So right now, I'm actually behind the egg. This egg is a rounded surface. Uh, what we need to do is actually run around this egg. But as you can see here, there's like a ledge behind the egg. And that's what we need to land on with that double jump. Uh, once we do that, we need to run along this wall. Be very careful. I don't know how much ledge you actually have here. And we're going to come here. So we're going to use that same backwards roll. See, even if you run into this, it's not such a big deal. Just don't uh, quick recover out of it. So we're going to roll into this electricity and mash R2 to pick up the lens. After we pick up the lens, we have to move very quickly. Uh, once we pick up the lens, we're going to jump towards that open archway uh, to the right. If we don't go quickly, then we're going to trigger the boss and get sucked into his arena. So roll, grab jump over here and that's the end of level cutscene skip it and you're done chromatic Gabriel observatory has finally defeated frankenstein's abomination uh super broken level uh you can fill up your mana if you need to um there's not really a lot as far as getting your sub weapons but you can refill your mana which is important for fighting the boss at this stage okay so an important thing about guillotine i mentioned inside of a labyrinth entrance that guillotine can grab onto air sometimes this is another example okay um, guillotine you can actually jump out of so that's how we're able to get like double jumps out of it however if you use your double jump from the guillotine like this I can now no longer actually double jump outside of that launch and what I mean is, is I can't do like a backwards long jump by breaking that first jump with a avalanche punch. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate. So here, I launch. Sorry, I fell down. Here, I launch, use an avalanche punch, swing. It won't let me double jump. Like I cannot double jump out of there. Um, so that's a rule that was very counterintuitive, but seems to be consistent is once you have used your double jump and not landed on actual solid ground, you cannot use it again outside of um, doing like a guillotine launch. So what we're going to do in this stage is we're going to be using guillotine to climb this wall. And then once we go up twice with guillotines, we're going to re-angle our jump towards this door and then use a double avalanche punch and extended landslide to go behind it. So, guillotine, launch with double jump, guillotine, launch to the back, avalanche, avalanche, landslide to the back, 
Okay. That time we were a little off on positioning because I was explaining. Okay. So. Sometimes you don't stick that well. It happens. There we go. So from here, we are actually at a place that's behind the door and on top of it. Uh, we have access to our double jump here if we mash jump enough. We're going to jump towards the rear of the stage from here. But don't go too far. Just go enough that you can get behind it. But not so much that it causes a problem, like that. That triggers the boss encounter. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that one more time. So again, launching upright with the two guillotines after the second one, launch to the up left and then start setting up your avalanches and landslide to go straight to the rear of the door. See, sometimes, like, I'll show you some other things that can happen. If you're too high, you kind of slide on this one. I'm trying to, uh, force it to be a bad one. <laughs> See, you can kind of slide down. Um, it is possible to recover it if you do a really, really good avalanche extend, but a lot of times you should probably just restart if you get that. See, you want to break those, by the way, if you're going to use the landslide strategy. Should have probably mentioned that. <laughs> See, that time I slid too far down. And that was me using the double jump to actually make my uh, launch a little higher there. But yeah, that's how you can get on that door. Um, after you get in here, pretty simple. Use ultimate magic to break these guys. Um, you can't use a dark crystal here. If you dark crystal, it kills them, and you can't kill them. You have to QTE grab them to death like this. After you kill them, you automatically get some dark magic back. But you can see you also get a ton of magic through them dying. How dare so, you break my toy? if you want to get that extra magic, feel free. You can also hit multiple of them, uh, that's, uh, multiple of them at the same time, if you're a little bit lucky. But that just depends on how they decide to move. By the way, I'm using square to do these QTEs, but you can use pretty much any face button that you want, as long as you press it at the right time. It's one of the uh, nice things about uh, this game. Last guy will always summon a black pool to chase you. Um, you can kill him with ultimate shadow if he gets in the way. Not a big deal. Skip the cutscene, and that's it for that chapter. Chapter 8. Curious, Outer wall. isn't it? Love can be a powerful... So, you get a mana refill here. If you... Don't you? Maybe you don't. Never mind, you don't get a mana refill here. <laughs> uh, so, the intended way is you, like, kind of climb on this ledge and go around the outside. Um, if you're full power, you can do this. Double jump towards that way and try to do an avalanche punch. Uh, what happens is there's a ring that you can grab there. I just didn't go far enough. So, like this. And then during the avalanche punch, you can grab. Uh, of note, there is actually a invisible platform that you can use here as well. 
kind of landed on it a little bit there. I'm trying to uh, <laughs> get this. Yeah, it's probably not going to let me. But there's a platform over there, so if you botch your initial jump, sometimes you can actually recover it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it on purpose. But just know that that's an option. But ideally, you want to do something like that. Grab that. And that skips you having to go around the outside with very slow crawling. Grab that. Go up. Switch to holy water while you're at it. Um, we're going to be doing an arena skip coming up here. We're going to be using about between four and five holy waters to get over it. You might be able to get away with three. I haven't really worked on it too much. If you're not doing new game plus, you could maybe use fairies in order to distract the enemies here and do the magic puzzle involved with it. So this is a double avalanche punch and five holy water combo. Nice and easy. Jump over the fence. Um, some of these, I've explained enough of the tricks that I think you guys can understand what I'm doing exactly. Um, really deciding what high jump to use is just a matter of understanding how tall it is and using an effective amount of holy waters and avalanche punches. And deciding a backwards long jump is a possibility. Once you get over here, you're going to spam out a bunch of fairies to hopefully distract these idiots. Sometimes they don't get distracted because they're assholes. Once you move this all the way, you sprint to the side, go through the gate as it's closing, and come down here. Um, if those guys give you too many troubles and you don't have enough fairies, you could try blowing a dark crystal on them. Uh, I mean, it'd be really shitty, though, if you did that in New Game Plus, um, non-full power. So, interesting thing here. This guy has a key on him. The minute I grab this key, the gate is going to close over here. Uh, if that happens, I'm going to have to fight my way through specters. If you do have to fight the specters, um, then you would want to use fairies in order to distract them. And then just kind of dominate through there. Uh, as you can see, the items in here have quite a few drops, so it's a nice place to get a few drops if you need them. Um, but we have what's called the Holy Cross Breakout. While you have Light Magic, if you do Area and then Direct, you do a move called Holy Cross. If during Holy Cross, you do a thing like pick up a key, or any pickup animation, it'll cancel the Holy Cross animation, but also cancel the pickup animation. So what the game relies on is the animation of you picking it up allows them to close the gate before you can get to it. So we're going to break that by using Holy Cross Breakout to be able to move before we should be able to. So get in kind of a good position because it's not extremely strict, but strict enough that you don't want to mess around with it. Um, do Holy Cross grab run to the door you need to get up a little bit of the stairs if you don't get up the stairs a little bit then you can get trapped and have to do a restart um, you can ignore the imps here uh, this place right here is actually a pretty common area to get the running reset you should see me kind of ice skate uphill here pretty soon yeah see like that So that's the game, like, resetting my run. And I'm not, like, doing anything special. It's just hitting certain points there. There's a healing thing here. Some stuff to break if you need it. Nice and simple. Okay. So that was Outer Wall. The Clock Tower. Mercy is Clock Tower has a lot system. of skips. Optimally. Uh, we're just going to kind of take it easy. A little bit. But first thing that's easy to do, jump over here. Um, you can stomp or hold your position if you need to land on that platform below. And you want to get on this elevator. Catching this first cycle is really important to uh, 
kind of mellowing out your first section, otherwise you lose like seven seconds waiting for the elevator again. Once you get up here, you're going to raise this platform. Hopefully in one go, without stuttering. <laughs> you're going to cross one of these balance beams. You can choose to do ultimate light if you want. Keep in mind that if you decide to do ultimate light, you won't have it as a potential tool against the boss at this stage, if you need it. Okay, a couple options here. Um, what you can do is you can go over here and do this lightning puzzle, if you so choose. Uh, to do this, you need to repel twice. If you don't repel twice, you get zapped. So, go up. One, two, hold up, let go. Let this cycle pass go up, you go across, and then ride the platforms. Another option you can do that's a lot riskier and requires holy water. Again, pretty much full power only for this strategy. You run so that you can get past here. Once again, the only open spot is near where the balance beam is, so keep that in mind. And what you're doing is something like this. So that was kind of a bad uh, timing thing. That wouldn't happen if I went here as fast as possible. Okay. And basically, I'm trying to use my holy water to get myself into a position where I can land on this platform. Um, it's a hard jump, costs a lot of holy water to do. Um, but it is possible. Sometimes you can do it with just holy water. Uh, other times you need to use a landslide puncture extension in order to get over it. So you just gotta kinda experiment. But it would save a fair amount of time. Especially if you didn't have to wait for a cycle on these slowly spinning platforms. Once you get here, the safe thing to do would be to running jump and double jump and grab this ledge. Okay, that'd be the safe thing. The not so safe thing would be this. Uh, I'm basically going to aim my double jump to an overhang that's off screen on the right right now. And I'm going to try to slide across the ledge that I would climb on normally. Like that. Um, that slide, you can start from the overhang right here and actually slide across the top of this ledge. Kind of like that. And, uh, yeah. It's a fairly decent time save because... Crawling across is quite slow. Once you get over here, you have a couple options. The conservative option is to jump like this with a running jump and land on that platform. Okay. And then from here, you can actually grab this with even a normal double jump. In fact, you could even do it in New Game Plus just by doing that with an avalanche punch extension. If you want to make it a little faster, you can even refill your magic here if for some reason you need it. You shouldn't, though. Faster way is to immediately do it. So run, jump, avalanche, avalanche, grab, and swing off here. Okay. So um, Frankenstein's monster skip. Uh, Frankenstein's monster is going to appear over here and slowly make his way towards you as you pull this crank. Uh, the concept of this is we want to pull it like this, so that we're going this way, but wait like here. And once he reaches a certain point, we're going to start pulling it again and going around in a circle. What we're attempting to do is lead him in the circle without him actually hitting us with attacks. Uh, what that'll allow us to do is raise the platform. If it locks into place, great. If it doesn't, then you have to fight him normally. So let's see what we can do here. Okay. 
You could forgo to do this all together, which would save you time if you're not confident in the skip. So I might have missed it because I got a little staggered there. But I got it. Okay. Once you get it, if you get it, um, it becomes a gamble. So, like, right now, he's got telekinesis going, so he can shoot things at me pretty much anywhere, which is really bad. Also, with telekinesis, he has a huge collision box. If you can manage it, though. Um, there's a huge invisible wall blocking that beam. And if you can manage it, you can get over it and trigger the end of level sequence. So I actually missed the bridge there, which was unfortunate. And that's what happens when uh, he basically decides he wants to crowd you. There's not really a lot you can do about it. That's why this is a very, like, gambly skip. Um, you're really hoping it works out, but it oftentimes will not. It's just, if he decides to telekinesis you a bunch, you could be just completely screwed. And once you don't have a, a one holy water at least, usually I use two, you can't get over that wall, really. Like, maybe I can do this. But as you can see, like, he starts crowding you, like, nothing works here. Like, he's just keeping me from doing anything efficient with my movement. That time I got lucky, because he actually damage boosted me over the wall, <laughs> which is kind of hilarious. Well, I guess I could show you this. If you get into this situation, after you jump over the wall, you can walk over to the elevator and end the level. And that's that skip. Um, if you decide to forgo that, just fight him. Not too hard. He doesn't have too much health either, to be honest. Uh, you're also going to be okay, let's say, for the next section. So the positive thing is, if you get this crank to work, you can always just drop the crank after that, and you'll have the bridge up here, and then you can just fight Frankenstein's monster. That would save you about 10 seconds, because you wouldn't have to re-crank the first couple spins. Uh, but ideally, if you're going to do this skip for real, you just want to do it. If you aren't going to do the full skip, or if you're not going to attempt the full skip, then you're better off just dropping the lever immediately and uh, fighting Frankenstein's monster. In total, maybe it saves 20 seconds. Maybe. It also costs holy water. So keep that in mind if you're holy water deficit. Because now we're coming to Ulrox. If you go for the Ulrox skip, it is going to require at least four holy water. The giant mechanisms and So Ulrox. Uh, Ulrox is a really, really annoying fight. If you fight him normally, he has two phases. This is the first phase. I'm just going to kind of burn through it here so you guys can see. Uh, this is actually not really the annoying phase. The problem here is that it takes so many resources to fight him, and there's so many sections that you just cannot speed up. So I used two full mana bars to get him into phase two. Phase two, he opens up these Iron How Maidens, you tell him to my lady? and bites werewolves inside of them. It's your job to kill the werewolves inside of the Iron Maidens as he opens them. Um, if you don't, then he'll continue to drink blood from them. And the fight's basically over once you open up all of them. Ideally, you fight him really cleanly uh, so that you can build your focus bar. Um, you can maybe pick up some drops like that holy water that was over there to speed up the fight. 
Um, but this takes forever, because even if I do this efficiently, he still goes over to this werewolf. I still have to get him off of it. I still have to kill the werewolf inside, you know, like... And then I still have to go through a quarter of his health again right here. Uh, Holy Water is very effective against him. You can always use a, a little bit of light magic to give yourself a Holy Water shield. If you want to do that. Like, here's an example of that. That'll allow you to kind of weather his storm a little bit more effectively. And just kind of My fight him. Will be pleased after I bring her your head. So yeah, very, very long fight if you do this the intended way. I'm just doing it right now just to kind of show a little bit. Um, you could be doing this way more effectively, but it's still going to be very, very long. Uh, the reason I am showing this is because Ulrock Skip is very difficult to do, and I want to have a good like starting point if people want to pick this up, but not invest a billion hours to learning every skip there is. Uh, that move is, like, the worst because it has great tracking and actually infinite range once he throws it. That's actually going to be a problem move when we get to the Ulrock skip itself. Nice thing about Holy Water is it builds up your focus very, very quickly. So you could use that to kind of get a hold of some focus to start getting some magic back. So you can kind of use a couple Holy Water to facilitate that. You do want to save about three Holy Water if you can um, for the next section. Possibly even more depending on what you're trying to do. For a new game plus non full power. How dare you challenge my lady? I'm gonna just try to speed this up a little. Okay, so this is a QTE. You get one, two, and three. Last thing for the level to do is to do this minor puzzle. Uh, this minor puzzle is bringing the blood to pools inside of the floor. Um, you can turn the blood slightly before it reaches a corner. That's important for the third pool blood. All you need to do is follow the path I'm showing here. Pretty self-explanatory. So, not this one, but the next one. Being able to turn early is actually kind of important to completing it on time. And you can see, like, it's really close there in order to get that one. And, I mean, you can see just how long this is. Like, such a long fight, then you have to do this puzzle afterward. Real downer. <laughs> but, uh, that's how you do Ulrocks kind of legit. Okay. So, keep in mind what happens here. Okay. Inside of this hallway, which is going to play an important part in the Ulrock skip, there's a vaulted ceiling. The ceiling has collision. There's collision on the walls. Keep that in mind. The end of level trigger is about there, mid-room, okay? 
that trigger is very, very small. It's very thin. There's, It's difficult to hit. It doesn't go very far underground either. Okay. So with that in mind, let's kind of get started here. The first thing you need to do is get underneath this chain. Once you get underneath that chain, use a double jump into a holy water to get on top of it. Sometimes that can be really hard, depending on if he crowds you, depending on if he switches the camera angle. Just do whatever you can to get on top of this chain. You need this extra height. It's absolutely important. Once you get on top of this chain, if I can, hopefully I can show this. Okay, I'm going to land. That's good. Um, we're going to go really high up here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to launch Holy Water, Avalanche Punch, Holy Water, Holy Water, Avalanche Punch, Backwards Long Jump. That Backwards Long Jump needs us to carry us either to the side of the doorway to try to skip that way, or on top of the doorway so that we slide along the tunnel. Uh, right now, the door is if you look if you look to the right of the screen near the boss health there's a mouth with a broken chain between where i am and between where that is that's where the door is that's the end of level door um Ulrox can be a real jerk like right now he's being really nice actually if he runs underneath you he can make the camera go ape shit just like crazy and that's really bad um so don't be it's going to be discouraging, probably, when you first learn this, because getting on the chain and then getting over the door is hard enough, but then hitting the end of level trigger is way harder. So I'm going to try my best here to make this work. Um, we don't really want to use direct launch, even though that would put us more centered with the door. The center of the door slopes upward, so it's harder to get over. So you kind of want to go towards like the sides of the door if possible. So let's see if we can get it this time. So, launch holy water. My lady will be One, after I bring her your head. two, backwards long jump. Okay. That was actually perfect. <laughs> I can't believe I got that the first try. Um, let's go into that again. Uh, that time, I didn't get on top of the tunnel. I was sliding to the side of it, but I was still in range to hit the end of uh, level trigger. If I fell too fast, I might have fallen too far to not be able to hit it. Um, let's see if we can get some failure states to occur. Okay. Okay. You can always fail to actually get up. <laughs> How dare you challenge my lady? Um, you want to try to get on top of the chain at its high point as well. Even that little bit of uh, height can help. There's that uh, double blade toss I was talking about being problematic. One. Two. See. Infinite height. Um... Ideally, hopefully, I would have hit him with the holy water to break him out of that. It didn't reach far enough, though. Um, I'm out of holy water to attempt this, so I need to restart. Um, this saves about four minutes. <laughs> so if you can learn it and if you can get it done, it is very, very strong. Um, and like I said, it only takes about four holy water to do. Which seems like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, not really. How dare you challenge my lady? Okay, so I'm on top here. Um, this is actually good because you can kind of get an idea of what this looks like a little bit. So if I was to go to the sides a little bit, I could like slide off and end up out of bounds. Um, there are places like this where you can stand still. I know Lestat Vampire actually uses this in order to position himself better for the skip. Um, if you got into a position like this, I don't know exactly how you'd do it, but probably something like this, and then you'd jump backwards maybe. And not quite. 
So this is an example of what happens if you fail it. You just start falling into infinity. And you need to restart. So let's try again. This is another kind of frustrating thing, is Aurox's collision box is already huge enough, but I get the feeling that the camera itself has its own collision box, and that can be problematic as well. My lady will be pleased after I bring her your head. Damn. Here's another example, sliding off. That time I managed to hit the end of level trigger. And I mean, this is definitely one of the mysteries of this game, still to me, is like, I don't understand exactly where the end of level trigger is when the gate hasn't been opened yet. I have a suspicion that it's pushed to a different part of the area. That's the basic concept though. Getting on the chain is the first hard part. Getting over the door is the next hard part. But to be completely honest, the hardest part of this is being able to hit the end of level trigger. And you just gotta kinda play with it. The blood of the best. has opened the way to the throne room. She holds the neck. And going to be the last uh, chapter for this video. You have full resources here. Take advantage of them if you need them. Um, again, full power doesn't need to worry about it. If you have holy water to burn, you can crush this first phase. This first phase is a bunch of vampires getting spawned. If you can throw holy water before they spawn, then you kill them in a single holy water. If not, then just kind of do what you can. Uh, skip. Here's your second dark crystal what? use. After you dark crystal, Use uh, ultimate light to fight her. And do the cutscene. You could also use ultimate shadow to take her to a corner and then ultimate light. Just up to you. Next phase, same idea. Use ultimate light and ultimate shadow to dominate. Um, absorb the magic spheres if you need them. But pretty simple fight. This is a mash QTE. You're then going to use block into direct to do a punch to her shield, and that's going to break it. Then you need to get ready for some QTEs. This is not a skippable thing. Very imperative you don't mess up these QTEs. If you mess them up, it's a potential loss of two minutes. So be very cognizant. The first QTE is as he gets kicked off, he'll whip his chain. You need to hit it then. So it gets kicked off. There's the first one. Second one is going to be when he is bracing himself against the steeple. So he's bracing himself, so you get ready. Okay. The next one is going to be, he's going to be like kind of crouched. He's going to look up towards the vampire lord. When he looks up towards her and gets ready to run, that's when the next one's going to be. Trying to let you know where these cutscenes are because again, like it's imperative you don't drop them. <laughs> it's a huge time loss. So here he goes. He's crouched, looking at her. Here it comes. And you're gonna get one more after this as he's plunging it in. And that's the last one. Uh, 
You cannot skip the rest of this until after Gabriel gets the wings, sprouts them, and then they disappear. Once the wings disappear from him, uh, it's going to change the camera angle, and then you can skip. So, pretty straightforward boss fight. If you don't want to use the Dark Crystal there, because you're afraid you're not going to be able to farm another one before the next section, uh, you could always just basically use your magic and just kind of work it out from there. Um, two full magic bars should be able to deal with her pretty effectively. If you double charge your magic, you should be totally fine for this fight, even without any other resources. That camera switch is where you can skip. Okay. So that's up through out of chapter 8. I'm going to go ahead and clip this video so that uh, it'll be good for reference. Uh, we will be back in just a moment, those of you inside of stream.